Hello everyone, what's up? In this video I'm going to show you how I apply chipping and scratches to these three Legion Terminators and not with sponging or a brush, but by using chipping fluid. So if you're looking for the most realistic way to apply battle damage to your Space Marines, this video is for you. These are the three Tartarus after priming them. As usual I went with AK Black Primer with Micro Filler, the Zenithal was purely for the pictures. After waiting 24 hours for the primer to dry, the models were ready for the chipping layer. This is Real Colors Rot Brown by AK Interactive. I applied it diluted 50% with lacquer thinner, building up opacity very gradually. This red brown would constitute what we call the chipping layer, that is to say, what you see under the top coat when the Space Marine armor is chipped or scratched. You could of course just apply a primer in this color and save yourself a step, but I didn't have a primer with microfiller particles in this color and I knew that I would need that extra protection, as you'll see in part 3. And speaking of protection, I often apply Tamiya flat coat on the chipping layer. The reason for this is to make sure that the red-brown paint, or whichever color you have down there, would not stain the top coat later. Sometimes that staining can be desirable. For example, for a base, I might purposely look for that in order to speed up the weathering process. Not here, however. I didn't want to leave anything to luck, let's say. Before base coating as such, I got ready to apply ammo heavy chipping effects. As you can see, this is just a completely transparent liquid, also known as chipping fluid. It dries very quickly and it will be completely invisible once it does. Apply a wet coat all over your model, just wait 20 minutes or so for it to dry. This is Real Colors Flat White, which I'm going to thin around 50% with AK's own thinner. After mixing the paint carefully and checking for consistency, I started spraying at around 20 psi, taking care to go very easy on the trigger. In other words, I was letting more air through than paint. At the risk of blowing my own trumpet, look at that. As you can see, there is zero graininess, just a perfect smooth white which is slowly and gradually covering that red-brown. This is made possible by the fact that real colors are lacquer paints, which in turn is also allowing me to really enjoy this without once having to stop to clean even the tip of my needle. Yes, that is correct, I sprayed this entire model from start to finish without stopping once. The next model was my Death Guard Terminator, so I just took the leftovers of the white paint, I added some off-white and then some more thinner just to be on the safe side. As you can see, it sprays just as easily as the pure white. I followed the same process and again I had no dry tip issues whatsoever. At this stage, some of you may be wondering why I didn't leave any red-brown showing creating a sort of free transition if you like. You could try that if you like, but for my purposes here, that wasn't desirable in this case. So this is the Death Guard Dude, or DGD for short, fully base coated in white. Another success. Time for something potentially more challenging and pretty new for me. For the iconic Imperial Fist Yellow, I chose Maze Yellow, which I had used for my Warhound Titan two years ago. At first it looked like it wouldn't cover over the red very well, so I allowed myself to be a bit more trigger-happy than before. The result was pretty decent, but I decided to give it a once-over with a flat yellow to see how the tone changed. To be honest, it was a little bit risky on my part, as I didn't really know what I was doing, but it seemed to increase the intensity of the yellow, so I was a happy camper. If you're enjoying this video, consider joining the Res for Terra YouTube membership which starts at only 0 0.99 euro a month. If you join the mid or top tiers, you will have access to exclusive members-only videos. In the next one, I will show you how I applied oils, dry, not in a wash, to create shading on these three same Legion Terminators. Check out my preview if this sounds interesting. And finally, we get to the crux of the matter, chipping. The first thing to do is apply water to the surface to be chipped, which I did with a flat brush. 
The model I had just dried for half an hour prior to this, by the way. Now, this had been an acrylic white, the mere contact with water and the tip of the brush would be enough to start creating chips. And with the heavy chipping fluid, some of those could actually get quite large very quickly. Instead, as you can see, I'm coming in with this toothpick and creating small incisions in the paint along panel lines and on raised edges. As Rick, one of my first community members, once put it, this is like reverse edge highlighting. I like the sound of that. In the meantime, I'm applying some more water and then using friction with the brush to enlarge the chips that I already created before. Then it's toothpick time again, and so on and so forth. That is essentially the process. As you can see, this gives you a degree of control that you could never dream to achieve with a sponge and paint. However, there is an additional advantage over either sponge or brush chipping. What is it? Well, what we're doing is creating actual scratches. All these chips are very much three-dimensional. There comes a time when you need more fine control than with the toothpicks, or the paint is simply too hard. Time to go under the needle, as it were. As you can see, despite my initial fumble, using the flat of the needle allows you to reverse highlight even faint lines on the armor, which would normally be very difficult indeed to tackle with precision. Like before, give the area a pass with a wet brush to wipe away any tiny flecks of paint that might remain and also to enlarge the existing chips. Drying the area every now and then with a tissue or paper towel can also be a good idea. Here is another example of what I was saying before about being able to create super fine scratches. Check this out. You can also reinforce panel lines and make your washes have a much easier time creating contrast. Or you can make literal holes in the paint. Anyway, I think you've seen enough chipping on white by now. Let's see how all this works on that Imperial Fist's yellow. As you can see, I'm doing reverse edge highlighting again, using the flat of the needle for some parts and the pointy end for others. Now, admittedly, this is time consuming, but it is a lot of fun almost therapeutic for me, and the results, I think, speak for themselves. So guys, these are the three Tartarus finished, or as I like to call this project, Tartarus Three Ways. So what are my conclusions about this project? Well, bear in mind that my goal here, first of all, was to establish whether using chipping fluid on infantry models which I had never done before, might be a good idea or not. I've painted a lot of vehicles using these techniques, but never something as small as a Terminator. My answer to that question is a resounding yes. I think chipping fluid is a great solution when you want the absolute best results possible in terms of realism. For a character model, for example, or a Primark or something like that, it can make all the difference in the world. And well, for me, there is no question of how to apply chipping to all my dreadnoughts, tanks, etc., I would always choose chipping fluid for anything larger. However, would I recommend this technique for an entire infantry army? Well, probably not to be honest, given the amount of time needed per model. My second conclusion is that all of this has been made possible by the use of lacquer paints. Yes, I know I'm a bit of a broken record, <laughs> but with acrylics, there would be hardly any paint left had I used the same tools and amount of friction and water. The flip side of this is that this process takes quite a long time, as you have seen by yourselves. But just imagine, if I need an actual needle to make even small scratches on this paint, how tough is the model going to be on the gaming table, huh? <laughs> My heresy models can break, particularly chain axes have a tendency to do so, but I know that their paint jobs are freaking indestructible. Now, I don't know about you, but I quite like that. My third conclusion is that I'm very happy to have learned a new technique with this project. I'm not referring to chipping here, but to using oils dry, so not as part of an oil wash, in order to create shading. I had tried this before, but not to the same extent, and not on a model as small as a Terminator. Also, to be honest, I think my results this time around were far superior. In any case, if you want to see how I applied shading with oils to these three Tartarus, you should know that this will be the topic of my next members-only video 
which is coming out next week. And speaking of YouTube members, I would like to thank all my YouTube members, and in particular, our new members this month, namely Veganti, uh, Lex, Barry Voice, Hollow from Zoso, and Brian Ralph. Thank you very much, guys. Your support means the world to me and helps me keep the lights on. That's all from me for now, folks, but remember, keep it up and weather it out.